what it exactly is an electrolyte. You hear that term a lot, but what I didn't realize is it's basically three nutrients. Yeah, I, you know, it's a big fad, right? It's a, you hear about it everywhere. It's the craziest fad. So it's mostly sodium, chloride, and potassium, mostly those three. Sodium, potassium, and magnesium, I read. Sodium, chloride, potassium, and magnesium. Oh, yeah, I didn't right? know about chloride was one as well. Sodium chloride is, yeah, so sodium chloride. The CL. Yeah. <laughs> I took chemistry. Yeah. Okay, potassium. Yeah. Magnesium. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they add a little, you know, that people add a little calcium in there too, you know. You do lose those electrolytes when you sweat. When's the first time that you've really read about electrolytes or saw it advertised in a drink? Like, was it Gatorade? I mean, I know Gatorade, Gatorade oh, right. always said like- those, those athletic drinks for electrolyte replacement? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's been around for decades. It has, it's yeah. been around a really long time. It's like these purple drinks, like who would drink that stuff? Artificial coloring and they definitely, sugar. They definitely yeah. add the artificial coloring. Yeah, it's crazy. And the athletes drink it thinking it's good for them. Well, yeah, I mean, it's what's so fascinating is a lot of it's geared for a lot of athletes who are people that care about their health are physically active and fit and they think they need to replenish with the electrolytes they lose during physical exercise would you agree that these drinks are helpful for athletes well you know what these they do with the marketing they they use athletes to market you know a nice watch roger federer wears a watch so you should wear roger federer's watch mm -hmm. you know people want to do what their famous athlete lebron drinks the gatorade so you drink gatorade exactly so you yeah. think you know i'm going for my jog for a mile so it's good for me and they, you know these guys are working out all day long for hours and hours and hours but the point is is that how i look at it is well you have this People are looking to sell people something cheap that they can make a lot of money on, like a high profit. Like sell them water, which costs them four cents to make, but sell it for $2.50 for a glass of water. Mm -hmm. We have this special water from a magic, you know, mine. Well, here, here, now we're selling them something sugar. We're telling people that sugar is junk food. The more sugar you put in your body, the shorter your lifespan. And salt is junk food. The more salt you put in your body over your lifetime, the shorter your lifespan. But now we got a way to market it to people to convince them to take sugar and salt in liquid form. Liquid form, by the way, mm -hmm. which means you absorb it more, it causes a more glycemic load in the blood, which is short lifespan shortening and brain changing, right? Brain damaging. Right. But now we got people thinking it's good for them because they're athletes. People they athlete admire, the people they admire are taking these, these athletes are taking them. But now getting back to, is it necessary? The answer is no, it's not necessary. It's actually hurtful, but it's a complicated answer because when you're on a very high salt diet, then you're always trying, your body has turned up certain mechanisms through aldosterone and other hormones to be excreting a lot of salt in the urine and excreting a lot of salt in the sweat. That's because you're on a high salt diet. So now when you're on a high salt diet and you do a lot of exercise and you lost a lot of sodium in the sweat and the urine, the body can't individually just excrete the extra sodium and the extra chloride. It has to take potassium and some magnesium and some calcium with it. Mm -hmm. So now you're losing electrolytes when you exercise and when you sweat. So the high salt diets makes them excrete other electrolytes as well that maybe you want to retain. Because you want to hold on to that potassium and magnesium. Right. And the, the more sodium you excrete in your urine, your sweat is actually aging the kidney. And it's not really good for the body, for your body to accommodate to the, to try to c tolerate all this extra salt your whole life. But in any case, so now you have a person who's on a diet that's very high in salt. And when they do a lot of sweating, a lot of exercise, especially in the heat, they lose sodium and other electrolytes. Whereas if you or I on a very low salt diet exercised, our sweat would just be water and we're not urinating at water. We could run or play tennis for hours or run in a, or hike in a mountain sweating. Then we're all, we wouldn't be losing any electrolytes. Our legs wouldn't cramp up because we wouldn't be excreting potassium and chloride and magnesium in the sweat. Mm -hmm. Our sweat would just be losing water so we could replenish with water. Right. So your electrolyte needs are proportional, proportional to your electrolyte use before you sweated. So you're saying someone that eats a high salt diet might need that extra potassium and magnesium because they sweat it out, but the high salt diets are also super dangerous in themselves. And then you're replenishing with extra salt paired with, with extra it. salt and sugar that you just were taking yeah. too much of. Right. It's like giving a person who's an alcoholic because they're feeling withdrawal from alcohol, some extra alcohol to drink to minimize their alcohol withdrawal. Okay. So you have this high, because here's what we're saying here that you're, if you could measure how much sodium you consumed in your whole life, over your whole lifespan, 
that would correlate with not just your risk of hemorrhagic stroke and high blood pressure, but also dose-dependent correlation with dementia and shrinkage of the brain. Because people aren't, don't recognize that the salt causes POW proteins, which are linked to Alzheimer's, and they don't realize that salt also damages the interior lining of blood vessels, irrespective of its effect on high blood pressure. It causes, not, it doesn't just inflame the blood vessels and cause microvascular hemorrhaging, it also causes interference with nitric oxide production, which has anti-aging and relaxation and, and you know, health effects on the blood vessels we're supposed to have exposed to general anti-aging effects and the anti-oxidation effect of nitric oxide, but salt prevents that from occurring. So you're aging your cardiovascular system, you're making it more brittle, more likely to fracture and break in a hemorrhage. At the same time, we're causing de decoupling neurovascular messaging, which you can't get the right oxygen to the brain when you haven't used right. And then it leads to more dementia and more strokes when you get older. And of course, people who are nutritarians and people who are at following my advice to have a very low salt, or just eating natural salts that are in food, also should, or people who are on plant-based diets, should know there's an inverse correlation between cholesterol level and hemorrhagic stroke. So an inverse correlation with cholesterol and hemorrhagic stroke means that the higher your cholesterol, the lower the risk of hemorrhagic stroke, and the lower your cholesterol, the higher the risk of hemorrhagic stroke. We've talked about that, that in the studies, in certain yeah. studies, vegans have 17% more strokes because of their, so the, and the point is, is that the higher cholesterol intake and the higher meat intake and bacon intake, that cholesterol is used to thicken the basement membranes, cause atherosclerosis, but causes some degree of protection from the damage from the salt. Yeah. So, it, so we're talking about, and we're eating healthier, then salt becomes a major factor resulting in people's shortened lifespans and poor neurologic health in later life.